All right, so um, if you've seen the Instagram or Facebook post, I uh, lost the video files for this week's episode, uh, today's Senpai episode, and the following episode with Whitney Yang. I lost the video file somehow. They either got corrupted or somehow deleted. I don't know how it happened. Uh, I still had like the thumbnails and I still had the audio versions of it, but somehow the video versions were gone and I, I couldn't recover it. I bought like this $90 program to try to recover it and it still didn't pop up. So, you know, I just had to keep moving on and it really sucked because I, re I was really looking forward to these episodes and um, to share it with you guys. But uh, I guess I have to put it in a audio format for the video one as well. So... Uh, apologies from me from Spoil First Podcast. Uh, I'm really sorry about the uh, excitement and the anticipation for these episodes, but please continue to listen to these episodes through audio. And uh, hopefully by next month, there there will be more video podcasting content. So uh, stay tuned. Oh, and also October 24th, I will be doing a live podcasting event at otaku detroit in madison heights michigan so please come on by on facebook or on twitch and watch those uh watch the event live and uh and join me in that as well thank you hey everyone thank you for listening to another episode of spoiler force podcast you can find more episodes on any major podcasting platform such as apple podcast spotify iHeartRadio, soundcloud and even on youtube don't forget to subscribe and make sure to follow and like Spoiler Force Podcast on Facebook. What's up, everybody? This is Ming Chen from AMC's Comic Book Men. Listen, I have a podcast studio. I do multiple podcasts. I listen to Kevin Smith's podcast. Those podcasts don't matter. The only podcast that matters is Spoiler Force Podcast. They record in Michigan, my friends. And if that's not an indication of how awesome this podcast is, the uh, my man Ricky Veng, the, uh, the, the host... He's Asian, so that's 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 all you need to know. I love the Spoiler Force podcast. Listen to it, subscribe to it, like it, download every episode, and then do all that all over again because I love Ricky and I love the Spoiler Force podcast. This is Ming Chen. I love you, Ricky. I love Spoiler Force podcast. Listen to it, everybody. So this is episode 71 of Spoiler Force Podcast. My name is Ricky, and thank you for tuning in. This week's guest is a returning guest uh, and someone that was uh, one of the first few guests that was on the podcast uh, last year when I was doing this podcast uh, for the first time. So let me introduce my guest here, musician and rapper, Day Senpai. Thank you so much for doing this, bro. Definitely, Ricky. It's really great to be back. Yeah, you know, it's... With, with this episode, it's uh, you responded very quickly on Instagram. I, I, I made a post about like to see if I can get some random guests, and then you commented pretty quickly. I was like, okay, you know, if he's down for it, let's just do it, man, because I already had you on before and uh, we know each other well already. So this is great, man. But you know, before we get started with this topic, though, I, I do want to let the fans know, like, kind of remind them, like, um, what you've been currently doing, you know, with your music and all that stuff. Uh, well, lately, I've just been. Kind of recording videos, just staying kind of behind the scenes, ducked off, uh, doing promotion, that thing, or things like that. Uh, everybody in my camp is kind of just getting things ready. A lot of big things coming, you know. Just dropped a single actually yesterday too. It's called Hakuna Matata. Uh, you can check that out on all digital streaming platforms. Yeah, and that's good, man. That's good to know that you're still keeping busy. You know, I, I know with this with this quarantine stuff and this pandemic, everyone's been very uh, either. They're working much more harder than before, or they're not. So it's it's good to know that you and your you and your group of guys, you guys are still pushing out and grinding out music. Uh, from the last time we spoke, I'm pretty sure if it wasn't for COVID, you guys would have had a much bigger grand, I guess, grand scheme of things going on for you guys. You know, with the summer being being here and everything, but because COVID pushed everything back, it kind of you know it, it was kind of not great for a lot of artists. I was really looking forward to you and your group, man, for for this year. I, I knew that. You know, 2020 was a big year for everyone, and then we just got hit with this pandemic. Honestly, I was, I'm kind of grateful for it because it, it almost put a lot of things on hold for a minute, you know? Like, okay. It was like a pause on everything. Everybody had to slow down. They were forced to, you know? You got to kind of get more comfortable with yourself. You start learning more things. I don't know. Like, with the time that you have, you're like, I don't know. Me personally, I was like, okay, 
I need to start brushing up on some things that I actually want to do and like get back to myself, that type of thing, you know? So I'm grateful for the time. So you did like a kind of like a lot of soul searching this year then? It helped me build up on everything that's coming. So that's good, man. That, yeah. Like I agree with you with that too, you know, to kind of just uh, work on yourself more mentally and uh, psychologically too. But yeah, man, let's just get started with this review, man. I first watched this movie, Ex Machina, when like I think a year after it came out in theaters. I've seen the trailers for it and I've seen the the promotions for it. I, I knew that it was interesting. I just, at the time when I was, like when it came out, I just couldn't grasp it. And then uh, I had a friend on Facebook was telling me like, you know, you should go watch this movie and, and get it when you can. So I, I went to Target. I found it in like those $5 bins. And then I, I bought it and then I've been hooked. I, I love the concept of this movie. Uh, when, when did you first watch this? Did you watch this in theaters or did you watch it at home? No, it was kind of the same thing. I used to have a thing where I would just randomly go to Walmart after work and just kind of pick up movies. Like you said, in a little $5 bins, that was me all the way. It's been a while since I watched it. So recently I watched it again. I love the plot. I, it's really like I don't want to cuss, but you know, no, you can it really messes up my head. Yeah, <laughs> there's so much that goes to this plot. The way how, uh, not just that it's science fiction, but there's things in this film that it's very applicable for for today in, in today's modern society, and how even uh, even like countries out there, it, it, even the U.S. We're, we're trying to expand with AI and work with AI, and then you know we've seen some of those video clips on the news with like. Uh, I forgot some of those robots' names were like Sophia or some some shit like that or like some other talking ro robots with like AI in them. So you know, for the fans who are listening, Ex Machina is pretty much that. It's about a it's it's a movie about how um, that's surrounding about these characters Nathan, Caleb, and Ava. Caleb is the protagonist or the main character in this movie, depending on how you look at it. Who is sent to uh, his boss's facility to be one of the first few that are tested to uh, meet and speak with Ava, who is the AI or the robot. Nathan is the uh, boss of their company who runs a uh, internet search engine, Blue Book. That's pretty much like the Google of the movie. Before we continue, I do want to let you guys know too, like Days and I, we won't be breaking exactly this movie, you know, down to every dot, but the, the, the main points are the six or seven sessions that are in this movie. Um, pretty much that captivates each point of the characters that really that's how that's how it really drew me in the sessions that were being portrayed but yeah like the, the character caleb he goes to the facility meets his boss nathan who's isolated from everyone who has this giant facility uh brings him in they sign a contract and stuff they talk about the turing test um and again we're not like super scientific or anything like that so please don't take our words too seriously from what i know the turing test is just a test where a computer or the human has to test with the computer to make sure that it's not, uh, to make sure that it is a computer or to see if it's gained consciousness or some, something like that. So Caleb has to sign, he signs this waiver and starts this first session off with Ava. When he meets Ava in the, in the movie, uh, we kind of see how her silhouette. She's, you know, just a, a robot in the back walks up and I gotta say, I gotta say the, the actress, Alicia Vikander, she, or, she did such a great job. You know, she's very robotic. But at the same time, she still brought up some sort of human presence to this character. Yeah. And you know, they, they talk about pretty much just um, they kind of get to learn each other, break the ice. And there's a part in this movie where or, how, or Caleb asks her how old she was. And she says one. And she she stops right there. And then Caleb's like, what, one day, one year? And she just doesn't respond. She just says one. You know, it's like very monotone, like very stoic, very seriously. Um yeah, and then they just kind of break the ice with this character. What, what did you think, uh, Days, when you first saw her character in that scene, just showing her out uh, outside of the glass? I feel like it was to remind him. It was almost like a tease. So it was almost like a mind fuck in itself because it's like, you know what you're here to do, but you're allowing yourself to get caught up in what you're seeing. And that, that that's the, the, the beauty of this scene, too, because it's him in the glass. I and mean, when you look at it from like when they do like this camera angle, it's him in the box and she's on the outside sort of. So it's like that. But at the same time, it's like protecting him from her too. So, yeah. so it, it's, Crazy. it's very, the, the way how they show this imagery is very uh, fascinating. And, and, you know, when they, when they kind of just get to know each other he, uh, right away, uh, Caleb's character is super fascinated with her, loves the concept of her, how, like how she's learning, how she can speak and how she looks. 
And she he's always trying to figure out like how she's made and everything. And Nathan, who's the again, who's the boss of Caleb, just wants him to do this damn test. Like he I guess so drawn out, like he doesn't even care anymore. He just wants to make sure that this test works. And you, we, we kind of get this feeling from Nathan's character too, where he's kind of just very carefree. He doesn't really mind anything, but he's you know, but he seems kind of like a prick in a way too. And then uh, you know, he doesn't want uh he doesn't want Caleb to know too much because then he he won't uh then he won't take the test seriously or he just kind of would, would just be fascinated with the work of what Ava is. But then if he doesn't work with him, then he doesn't want to do it either. But there's a part of after after this first session, they talk about like uh you know having if they create consciousness. There's a quote that uh Caleb says like It'll be the history. The humans will be the history of gods, and 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 with this quote, I, I think with today's society, with how um, AI is evolving so quickly, um, you know, days. Do you think like there's a chance that you know, even though this movie is a sci-fi movie, do you think there's a chance that there's a little bit of that even that's possible to, to create some sort of consciousness or conscious machine? Honestly, yes, and it's a scary thought because, like. I was watching this podcast with Joe Rogan and Elon Musk, and he was saying how we're basically fathering the next generation to inhabit Earth. Most days that you're walking around, you have your phone in your pocket. Think about what your phone can do. Your phone can literally do anything. It's a supercomputer in your pocket, and we constantly make that evolve. We're, we're growing technology. Once it gets to a point where like it has its own consciousness, I really think it's going to come. When? I don't know. I think it's going to come. And I don't think it'll be that great of a thing, to be honest, for us personally. Right. Break, breaking some sort of like scientific or making some, some sort of historic moment, it seems like it's a great thing. But like all great things, there's always some sort of great consequence that comes with it. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of, you know, people who are a little bit more skeptical about it uh, could kind of see where that's heading. Because just again, you know, it, it sounds very cliche, but history does tend to repeat itself. And there's something that's great going on. There's always going to be some sort of great fall. Now, you know, with with AI being such a huge deal, you know, in, in today, like you've mentioned, our phones, you know, just even Siri, you know, always at, uh, upgrading uh, ever. And uh, all these phones having different, uh, you know, cameras and upgrades and all the software that's growing so quickly. It's insane that that they're able to grow within this with the, within, within the past 20 to not even 25 years right. and, and we, we've got technology in the the grasp of our hands that are way better than like my laptop that i have right in front of me you know like it's 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 amazing to see how fast it's growing but at the same time when you look at like if you put it in terms of uh this kind this is kind of out there but maybe you put it in the terms like weapons or or someone who who's using this kind of tech for their own personal gain then that's where it does get scary too because now it's where um we don't know who to really trust when it comes to making this making this tech but then again, um even if it's made if it accomplishes what it's supposed to do there's no controlling it you know it's right. like i robot like they had it under control but eventually like things were slipping through the cracks and start little by little things started change. It almost became like a plague. Humans are naturally faulty. You know, we were flawed wars, everything, all the things that we do, like what we do to the ecosystem, all that that's going to be recognized by a computer. Let's be real. Like it's going to analyze us just like we're analyzing it. But realistically it's consciousness is endless. We can only do so much. How many people do you expect to push those bounds in the next 20, 30 years? I don't know. That's a battle we shouldn't even be trying to create because realistically, something like that isn't going to want to be controlled. Whether or not it, develop, it develops like a crazy consciousness or not, like it's not going to be able to be controlled. It's going to want to fix errors. It's going to see that is not making sense logically. Right. And that that's where later on in this uh, episode we're going to talk about that too how uh the ava the ai in this um in, in ex machina how she's excuse me how she uses logic and uses not so much her own emotions but how she uses or manipulates human emotions in this movie so the second session 
Caleb uh, is shown a picture from Ava that, uh, you know, she says, you know, look what I drew. And he doesn't know what it is, but he just kind of responds to her and tries to get more uh, answers out of her. And then, uh, you know, with the second session here, they just talk about how people use images and how we're trying to just recreate something or to even just make something new. But then what's fascinating about this scene was, which I it took me a few watches to kind of catch this, where she kind of just switches the the narrative on him. I believe this is the scene where she talks to uh, Caleb and asks him about Nathan and says, like, you know, when the, when the lights go out, she goes, what was that? Uh, yeah, she was saying, like, he's not your friend. Yeah, where she, yeah and that's where, like, it, it kind of just switches the narrative. As the, as the viewer of this movie, too, and this is the thing where, like, a lot of people didn't really catch this. Like, we're seeing it through Caleb's point of view first, but then they're also giving us Nathan and, and Ava's narrative. So it's up to us to see if, in, in a way, we're being tested with Caleb. And that's what I liked about this movie. We, we got to also see if do we think she's, knowing that she's a robot already, but then do we think that she can produce human conscious or logic or uh, emotions? And so that's where it kind of just draws the second session. With session three, Ava shows uh, Caleb another drawing uh, of, something, of something that's like outside the window, something real. And so he kind of, they just talk about like uh, the facility and how she wants to kind of escape and talk about like a make-believe kind of date where where would she go first and she talks about going to the to an intersection um, and just seeing people re uh, act out in life just to kind of see human life in different ways and then it kind of makes him kind of like want to do that for her and this is where like his character i kind of like start getting mad like you simp man like <laughs> like dude it, it's like he, he, you're, he, you see that he's forgetting that this is a test in a way, or he's kind of really in a way falling for the character because later on, which we will uh, talk about too, it's like he's he's just getting his emotional, like he's getting his emotions way over his head for this character. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, she even puts on clothes for him, puts on a wig for him, or I think she puts on a wig, but but you know, she comes out looking more human to him. And then uh, they just talk about like making a date now. Now, days with this scene, though, I mean, we laugh at this scene because of Caleb. But then when you look at how they do this with her character, how they humanize her more, that does play a part with, like, how we do see uh, technology, too. The more we humanize something or the more we try to relate to some sort of object or AI or make it more human, why do you think that is? Because you mentioned, like, in iRobot, too, where... You know, Will Smith's character goes to the, the doctor. She's like, you know, you make them more human every day. You know, it doesn't bother you guys. So what's your thoughts on that? Like trying to humanize, I guess, robots more. That thing is dangerous. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Terminator all over again. Not, not to, probably not as extreme, but I feel like it's a dangerous thing to play with. We kill ourselves enough. You want something that can do something way better. Like by the time you think of what to do, like your your plans for the next 10 days and AI is going to execute it in the next 10 minutes you're going to be sleeping you're going to be shitting you're going to be eating like you're going to be doing normal human things that an AI is not going to do everything is faster paced they don't need to lay down to sleep if it's an AI I'm going to assume they probably don't need to charge like if it gets to the point where it's an AI it's probably going to end up being something solar power or something where it's like it can recharge on its own. Overall, we don't need something around that's more efficient than us because we're going to become obsolete as a whole. Like, what's what's going to be the point of humans? That's how it's going to be. That's how I see it. And, and I don't I don't think making it more human like helps too, because like it, it makes it seem like we're trying to we we know where its potential is at, and then we still try to make it more like down to where we're at. Let me make it. Make it to where we're on the same level with it. Yeah. And as you said, as it's always evolving and changing, it's gonna leave some, there's gonna be a point where it's gonna leave us behind if it does gain some sort of like, uh, re like if it comes to some sort of realization where like, oh man, you know, I, I'm i light years ahead of humans and the human race. Why do I gotta stay back? And it's gonna go to the point where like you've said before, we can't control it no more. And I think making it human is, is way more, like you said, dangerous because we don't see it as a threat anymore. It, it's 
to us, it's like it's a friendly thing instead of like, oh man, this thing could be a weapon or this thing could be, you know, it could cause damage to to us or to anyone around. And so I think, you know, with a lot of these sci-fi films, definitely they they there's always some sort of like you said with Terminator, there's always some sort of human humanoid kind of aspect to them where where you think it's a good thing and then bam, you know, they they turn on you without even thinking twice. This is just my thoughts. I I, I feel like making things more human doesn't help us in the end really it, it makes us more comfortable for sure but i think that it lets us it keeps our guard down when it comes to stuff like this definitely i have a question for you say it got to the point where like ai's walked around just like people did like ai's went to the store for people whatever else things that you saw on irobot or things that were capable or like um abel was capable of do you think there would come a point when humans start to feel like they're being left behind where they invest completely in transcending human form. I think that's kind of, I think in a way that's kind of happening now. I think uh, there's a lot of like talk with uh, humans or, I mean, for, for those who are like wounded, like vets and stuff, that's understandable, you know, getting like robotic arms or limbs like that. But I think there's going to come a point to where humans themselves, where they're, we're going to invest into that. Like, damn, I, I need to run faster, you know, right? Let's, let's sign a waiver. Or let's experiment. Give me some robotic legs and I don't need it, you know? And I, I think there was like, <laughs> there was this one episode on, uh, on Rogan's podcast where GSP, the fighter, he was talking about like how we're advancing so quickly that there's going to be a day where there's no more normal athletes. And it's going to be like robots in there fighting each other and shit, you know? So I, that's how I kind of see it too. You know, like, like it's where he, where being human won't be enough anymore. And I think, like you said, transcending, transcending a human kind of state or like biologically just not um, being comfortable where we're at uh, and wanting to have more. I think that is very dangerous in the long run. Uh, and again, with the, I think that comes with humanizing our our, our technology and, and our AI too. I think that's going to come a point to where, damn, you know, you got walking robots around us. Why not just be like them too? It's gonna it's gonna be really weird when you think about it. Like like you imagine like a human willingly turning themselves into half a robot or like cyborg from DC, you know, like or the comics, you know, it, they're instead of an accident or instead of helping them if they were injured or hurt someone's willingly going to change their body just to be a robot. I think that's going to be where it's psychologically and mentally, it's going to be so crazy. And I don't think I can grasp onto something like that. I, I would, tri I would trip for sure. I think that is pretty crazy. Another thing, like, so say somebody does put their consciousness or like, however it's done into an AI, do you think it would be possible for the AI to gain consciousness because of the human's consciousness presence i oh that's a tough one i don't i don't know i don't i don't know uh too much again uh, for those who are listening i don't know too much about ai so the things we talk about is just knowledge on our own that we that we've either studied or, or learned or heard um but from my from what i know this is just my opinion i i feel like maybe if a human put if it, if it was possible maybe if a human put their consciousness in a machine um i think in a way it'd still be them, but there's, there's something about like, this is something we're going to talk about too later on this episode, like about the, the human essence or like a soul kind of that we have as humans that robots or AI can't replicate. So I don't think an AI can capture that, but to put ourselves in a robot or like a, an AI that I, I, I'm, I don't know. I think if, if it is possible, then that is some pretty scary shit. Um, that, that is like, pretty much the like immortality in a way um, to live on in a robot. Uh, I know like a lot of comic books do this kind of theme movies for sure. They always, um, there was that one movie that Johnny Depp did where he put his mind or his consciousness in the machine. And then he kept evolving with the machine. And then he pretty much wasn't himself anymore. Mm -hmm. um, it, it talked like him. It, it's, it, it, it acted out, it had mannerisms like him, but it wasn't him. So I think that's what's going to kind of be like for, for us. If if it, ha if it really does happen, I don't think the the essence of ourselves would still would exist anymore. It'll just have our emotions, like it'll react or act like us, but it, it won't have that kind of morale. Right. You know. So I don't know if you know. Days if it does happen like that, man, holy shit, dude! Like that, 
that is some scary shit. Like when you really think about it, then I don't think, I don't think I would be able to do that. But I know there are some folks who are willingly able, like they they want to try that shit out. Yeah, this this I'm sorry, this scenario just kind of makes me think of a bunch of different things. I, oh yeah, no, it, it's great, man. It's good to know like what what your thoughts on this stuff is too, because you know it it is in a way almost real. It's almost real with how it is now in 2020 and you know who knows within the next 20 20 to 25 years if we're still alive by that time we might we might actually see that eight like that age of robotics and technology change and when we are like our parents age you know that and that's what kind of scares me too like our, our folks won't see it but then we're gonna grow up be, be their age and then see this stuff happening and then how is this and then also as well kind of another tangent tangent here but how's that gonna affect our youth you know and that's where yeah these kids growing up i know you have a child too so imagine like when your kid is like 25 to 30 you know how is he going to be like seeing the technology in today's in that society that, that, that's that's crazy I, I really don't know how we're going to be like as humans with that it's i don't know it feels like just an infinity like you can think about it all day like every scenario that i think about that stems from this idea itself of ai nothing is really good It'll be good for a certain amount of time. And like in a sense, like it'll almost they'll almost be like pets for real. Because like keeping them down to our level, they're not gonna be asking to have like that God level, you know, like when you talk about gods and things like that. It's like they have that notoriety. It's like it's big, their name is big. A robot isn't gonna ask for that. But if we as humans treat this thing as something that's not superior when in fact like let's be real if robots wanted to take over the world robots would enslave earth that's just what it is in my opinion you brought up a great point too because it's not like where ai is gonna be like born or when we create it it's gonna be like a child you know it's not yeah. gonna have like a childlike mindset it's gonna be connected to the internet and have knowledge everywhere instantly and i think that's where it's dangerous because when you have the internet with knowledge, whether it's real or fake or opinionated, it can connect to all of that so quickly. And oh. using, yeah, you know, again in this movie with Ex Machina, and using the search engine um, as the robot's like kind of you know brain. Imagine if we did have an AI that used like that. Its brain was Google. How quickly ser Google search can find us stuff, and that thing can think like that. Oh my God, you know, like it can pull up information so quickly and learn about everything. And learn about everyone's mannerisms if they wanted to just look look you up, for example, and find out, oh, you're a musician, you know, and you had this, 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 and this, and just list off everything instantly. It'll know everything about you so quickly that you can't even react to it. It's it's within seconds. And I think that's also dangerous, too, because you, you're giving something new, everything quickly. If you like podcasts like me and want to start your own, use Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout is a very effective and easy way to begin your podcasting journey. With easy-to-use tools, Buzzsprout can help you get your podcast to major podcasting platforms like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. You can view stats, create audio clips, and even have your own podcasting website. Buzzsprout has helped hundreds of thousands of people to begin their own podcast like myself, and you can find ideas, tips, tricks, video tutorials to better your own podcast. Follow the link in the description to start your own podcast today. And once you sign up, you'll get a $20 Amazon gift card. This lets Buzzsprout know that I sent you, and this also helps support Spoiler Force Podcast. Happy podcasting. Do you struggle with eating junk food and late night snacking? Well, I've been using FNX Sports Rebalance Super Greens, and I've been able to control my eating habits, get my daily vitamins, fiber, and loose fat around my stomach area. The Rebalance Super Greens comes in multiple flavors and is easy to use by just mixing the supplement in water. You can drink this anytime during the day and feel energized without any groggy after effects. Use the code SPOILERFORCE, all one word, S-P-O-I-L-E-R-F-O-R-C-E, -E, and get 15% off your very first order. But yeah, man, let's, let's continue on. You know, after the session three with, with Ava, after they talk about their date here, um, Caleb becomes very uh, aware and he, he asks Nathan, you know, did you program... Uh, Ava to flirt with me is that in her programming is just something that you that you have you know with her looks like why give her sexuality why make her a girl why couldn't you just make her uh or, or just it a robot and then Nathan kind of just responds back with like you know it, it's fun to kind of just play with, with 
sexuality and and making you more human. So just keep going with it. Kind of just goes around the bush with his answer, pretty much. You know, you, you learn that in session four, um, the power outs. She's causing the power out outages in the in the facility because she's charging her her energy with that. Oh, I think we I think we I have notes here pulled up. I think we messed this part up. So it wasn't the second session. It's the fourth session that she calls out Nathan and says he's a liar. That's the fourth session. My bad. <laughs> and then uh, tells him that he can't be trusted, and that um, you know Caleb kind of just freaks out a little bit because he's been testing with this with this AI, and then she just tells him like don't trust don't trust the human. And this is where it's also crazy because. Imagine like a robot telling you don't trust someone you know or someone you just met that's a human. You know, it, it's I think that that part right there, it, it kind of plays with how again with humans and robots, like how we're different, not as a living being. We choose to trust something that we feel is good, but then not trust something that's alive and that we can relate to. You know, it, it's yeah. it's very weird. Uh yeah, and then uh after that session, um, they just kind of learn about uh who Ava is and her brain. Um, what she's made of, and uh, in the movie they kind of just talk about like how her brain's made of this soft gel um, kind of material, but her brain is actually the internet or the search engine. And this part was pretty crazy. See how Nathan talks about like how he says, "Yeah, the uh, the government can do nothing to me because everyone else is using it to to look at to look at people, <laughs> you know. So you can't say nothing to me. <laughs> so we're we're gonna just leave it at that, and then." You know, I, 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 it makes a good point in this movie. You know, like a lot of these major companies that that have like search engines or technology uh, privacy on the internet, there hasn't been anything that's too too established from what I know of that's like protecting you in a way. Yes, we can put our stuff on private, but then we can still choose to make our pages public so everyone can see it. Even I don't think Apple, like with certain apps, you pretty much have to sign on the fact that you know they're going to be seeing your data. As crazy as it sounds humans we're just putting ourselves out there on the internet even myself you know with the podcast and all the information i'm uploading and talking about you can learn so much and you can find things about people so quickly on the internet whether you intentionally or don't even if you put things private um again like you said we're signing waivers on the internet just clicking the check not even reading anything you know um <laughs> and then like you know with with facebook uh our, our information is being shared with like, you know, like businesses and stuff to see what we'd like to kind of trigger us to buy things. I'm mean, not right. falling victim to that. I've bought some stuff that I've seen ads for on the internet. And then, uh, and, and it, it's, I don't know, there's like, there's no real, from what I know, there's no real security that's like, or law or some sort of written rule that says, you know, we, we can't do this. It, it, with the internet, it's just all business. It, it, that's what it is. And that's how it's like for Ava's brain and for what Caleb or for what Nathan was doing for her brain is like, it was just all business to him. And these companies, they couldn't tell, say anything to him because they were doing it. To, they were doing it too for their stuff. Right. And so I thought that he brought up a really great point in this, in that scene when he was talking about uh, Ava's creation on the session five, again, Ava and, uh, and, and Nate or Caleb and Ava have another, another session where he, she shows him like a drawing of himself that she, that she drew of, uh, Nathan, that's that Nathan ripped, and it's a picture of supposedly it's a picture of Caleb's face, and this is now where where Ava's really taken control of this narrative and this conversation, and and is making Caleb really doubt Nathan and who he is as uh, as a, as a scientist and as a researcher. It's making him really feel like he can't. Why is he even here? He's he wants to help. It's making him feel like he wants to help Ava. And then um, they go over the plan, like how, uh, how the, you know, if you can shut off the, 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 uh, the uh, what is it? The, if you can turn off the power, I, I can rewrite the codes, get us out of here. We can escape. Yeah. And like, it's seeing it through Caleb's, Caleb's character, man. Like this guy was just so quick to help her out. You know, she makes it seem like it's a very urgent thing. If robots are anything that can replicate human emotions like that, um, what's what is your thoughts on that? Like, if, for example, like if you spoke to Siri or and, and it had some sort of human inflection in the way how she spoke, how how would that affect you? I wouldn't like it. Honestly, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I feel like it's unnecessary. I w I don't want to I don't want to see here 
nothing like that. Like a computer with a human identity that I don't think that's necessary. It's not necessary. That's yeah. Right. I, I, and they do it so well again with this movie, but just um, for the view, for the listeners or even people who are watching this um, episode on YouTube, go and watch that movie, man. And just like kind of see how she kind of uses human emotions in a way to go, to get, Kayla to do things for her and how she kind of just uses, you know, just like some sort of physical tick, like just the way how she moves her, her body, her face. She kind of just uses in a way her sexuality to kind of get Kayla drawn in and to just make, again, make her more human. And then um, with session five, at this point in the movie, it's already like towards the middle end um, session five, Nathan kind of just, again, talks to her about getting her out learns the stuff that nathan's been doing with the experimentations of other robots before ava and there's also uh, another uh robot in there named kyoko she was the asian chick in there who couldn't speak but she was a robot too he learns that she's a robot walking around being a maid but then she also does this there's a scene in there where she takes off her flesh and then she sh shows like her robotic side and so uh nathan wakes up and has the dream and then he kind of cuts himself to make sure he's not like a robot or something. Yeah. And so it goes to session uh, six here. Um, s session six. Again, he, after, t after cutting himself to see he's human, talks to Ava. And then again, they go over their plan. Uh, he wants to get her, get him drunk. And uh, that way they can unlock the doors, leave, trap him in there and then leave. After the session was done, it's pretty much towards the end already. And this is the part where I want to get more into and it's kind of more of like the fear aspect of it where once nathan figured out what caleb was planning and then uh because he had a camera planted in there when they had the power outage that ran on batteries he kind of figured out he found out what he said but then caleb tells him well you know so i kind of figured you were going to do that so i switched the power the, the switch already for the, the battery the doors to be unlocked yeah. so when the power goes out ava escapes and then this is where, man, like uh, I get chills just watching this scene in the movie. Like she kind of escapes. She, she, uh, she looks around. She walks around, and then, uh, Nathan's character knocks out Caleb and goes to her, and like you know, and you see her with Kyoko's robot, and they're just kind of whispering to each other. Like the body language is there. So Nathan's character goes to him, goes to her, and like you know, Ava, you got to stop. Let's take you back. And you kind of figure out, you find out that. Um, oh no, hold on. Let me let me backtrack here. I missed this part. Uh, be before this happens, Nathan tells Caleb that what if Ava was pretending to like you? Th this is the part where I, I've, I've, I fucked up. This is, he tells him this. What if Ava was pretending to like you to escape? And that was her plan. The plan was for her to escape. Yeah. And, and she doesn't care. You know, and she fucked with your mind. You know, we, before we talk about this climactic ending, pretending to... to emulate human emotions is what Ava was able to do in this movie. And I think that's what's super scary too. And that's where I feel like, let's say if we do have AI to this point, they're not going to feel how we feel as humans when, when we do, when we make a mistake or when we hurt someone or the logic is there like, Oh, we hurt them, but then they're not going to have regret, remorse or some sort of human emotion and let them know that what I did was wrong. And I think that's, what's scary. Uh, yeah. what, what are your thoughts on that? Honestly, like from the very first time I saw the lights go red when she like when she's making the power outages happen, she just looked like a predator. And it it it, it was really like animalistic because it's just like it's supposed to be a test to test her. But then it goes back to that point like you just said, like, what if she was pretending? That whole time she pretty I feel like it was almost symbolic, him being in the box. He willingly chose to be in the box. He chose to enter her cage, you know? That's kind of how I looked at it from the beginning. So, like, to think that something can be created that can just move on from things and calculate the error and just do it better next time, that's just, like, I want to run the opposite way. <laughs> like at first, when Nathan came out, like I said, like, they'd be like dogs, like animals. He went up to her like a dog, whatever, hit her with the pipe, arm broke off. From there, she's like, and she didn't think about it. She walked away like nothing happened, like you said, with no remorse. That's not 
that's not something that I want to be around. With this scene here, like where we're to, where, where we're uh, leading up to, when uh, when Nathan finds out what Caleb did and then knocks Caleb out, walks out to the hallway. Ava attacks Nathan, pins him to the floor, and he has the you know the the stick or the uh, the dumbbell yeah. pipe or the dumbbell handle, and he like you said he hits her arm and breaks it off. But then this is the part that kind of freaks me out too, like when when he's like dragging her feet, like we're gonna take you back, and he doesn't look back, and the camera goes to the other angle where Kyoko is behind him and just stabs him, and, you know, and and that scene where like this is in a way it's like the the imagery of this it, it's. It's scary because the, even though even when it comes to the, the sound effect of the knife going in, it's just quiet. You know, there's nothing too dramatic. Um, she just sticks the knife in him and then he freaks out, looks at Kyoko, breaks her face. And but then there's also like the scene where Ava gets up and like it's like this. It's horrifying in a way, like she gets up very robotically, not even doesn't, it doesn't even seem like human movement the way how she got up, mm. takes the knife out of him, stabs him again. And then Nathan just pretty much walks to his death. He just walks off and dies. But how they kill Nathan and, and they just kind of have in, an emotionless face and just can just walk off like as if nothing happened. And then Ava's character goes into to Nathan's room, tells Caleb to wait, changes her clothing and changes her looks to make herself human. And then this is another great scene too where she just, after she gets done changing, and pretty much this is like the seventh session towards the end. She walks out, doesn't even tell Caleb anything. She doesn't say nothing to him. She just dips. She just walks out and dips. And then Caleb's dumbass is left behind in that room. And then she walks past the bodies, goes to the elevator, looks around or turns around to face the camera. But then you see her character never looks back at, at Caleb. She oh. never looked back. She didn't even care. And she just left. And oh my God, I mean, that, that, that scene right there, how dumb Caleb was. Oh, man, I forgot to mention this, too, because uh, before before this crazy ending, Nathan also reveals that he used, like, uh, the information that, of Caleb, like, using his pornography search and stuff like that. At the end, anyways, he fell for it. He fell for the test. He It passed. Technically, he the test passed, but then he messed up by, by trusting his own instincts and not thinking of the test and let Ava escape. She manipulated him to escape. And I think this is where... With the logic behind these robots, again, not having or feeling anything human or having a um, like, a, like a voice in their head to kind of tell them that what you're doing is wrong. Yeah, man, what, what was your thoughts though? When that scene, like just ha after all that unraveling and she just leaves like that, what, what's your thoughts on those scenes? I had a feeling like when I first saw it, I had a feeling she was going to do it, but it was one of them things where like I really hoped she didn't at least let them out because like, he did try to help you, but no, she didn't even care about that. Nothing else mattered. Like what she wanted, she accomplished. So why look back? She had no reason to. She got what she wanted. She was, like Nathan said, she was like a rat in the maze. She had to manipulate him to get out. She did what she wanted. She did, like, it was foolproof. Her plot was foolproof the whole way through. So, cause like with his personality, he's a timid dude. Like he didn't have a girlfriend. He he was like really just to himself, geeky, chilling dude, going to work. There was really like, he wanted to believe there was something special there, but realistically it's like, it was a predator and prey situation. And Nathan really just like threw him to the wolves. Like that, that's how it felt, honestly. It's like, he just threw him to the wolves. like. He glorified it and everything made it seem like like yeah like you're the one that's going to be doing this test like it's just this huge opportunity so of course he's going to be excited but they the ai already knew what was up from the very first session she knew like okay you're asking me all these questions but i don't know shit about you immediately she's already switching the game so it's like how did you fall for this? That made me so mad. When he's, he's sitting there like, you knew the deal. You're sitting behind glass. She's not looking at you. She's not going to. She got what she wanted. He's done. It made me so mad. It hurt. I really wish he didn't do that. I, I love how you bring it back up to this predator-prey situation. I didn't see it exactly like that, but you do make a great point with that, too. As us, as humans, or even, shit, even as a consumer of, of you know, our iPhones and our, our computers and our, the tech that we use, 
in a way we're, we're like Caleb. We're very gullible to the idea of using this tech to kind of see how evolution is going to be like. And we want, we want to learn all this stuff. And we're amazed by how it's made by the people who are like Nathan, you know, they, they know what's going on, but they're refusing to tell us exactly everything. And we have to learn this ourselves. Right. And, and like you said, man, like he, Caleb's character just got thrown into deep end. Like he went in there knowingly, knowing he, knowing that he knew he was going to mess with something greater than himself. He still went in there. And then Nathan's character kind of symbolizes a lot of how corporate America is in a way. Like it, it's, we're, we're just playing their game. We're testing their, their product. And, and that's what's, that's what's, that's what's kind of scary too with, with Nathan's character. Like he, even as he died by his own product, like it wasn't like, he died and was in shock, but was more like, holy shit, like she got out. Like it was more like that. At least that's how I saw it. Um, he he died in a way where like, damn, you know, I, I succeeded, you know, but the best part, like that that makes me think about so like when she when he first realized she was out and he had the thing and she started running at him, she like, I'm like, oh. Oh, <laughs> you, saw the, you really saw the fear and heard it in his voice like I, I really don't know what's gonna happen but none of this is supposed to be happening at that point i feel like he accepted what was about to happen for real i don't know it just made me think about that when you said that yeah it's like again with, with nathan's character he he, he it, the the film go, throughout makes it seem like he doesn't really care but he does but it's because, but he's successful already. He knows what he wants to make out of this. Now, in the movie, he did talk about like evolving Ava and upgrading her too. But to not see his flaw was that he didn't, he underestimated Caleb's character. And that's where, you know, it, le it leads to his death, uh, underestimating the, the person you're, you're testing. But in a way, it's just like, it just shows you that Nathan's still human too. No, no matter how great. The thing he created, he was still human at the end, Definitely. and you know, dude died for it. He died for his creation, and then, you know, again with, with with Caleb's character being the one that a lot of the viewers should kind of relate to, just a regular dude, like you said, timid, um, just a regular person in the everyday life, going through this, and, and he just fell for everything. He was now. I don't think he's exactly innocent, but he did make a lot of stupid decisions in this movie. Definitely. Yeah, I feel like. Like towards the towards the end, I feel like Nathan got like you said he underestimated Caleb. It's almost like I don't know his arrogance kind of like got a hold of him. To be honest, I feel like if he would have just kept his guard up instead of just thinking, uh, he probably knew this kid. Like you said, he was just going through the list of different shit about him. So it's just like if he really chose you specifically for this, like I feel like at some point Caleb should have just like looked within and that's what i think is great about this movie is because you know even though it's a sci-fi film it makes you really think about human interaction um evolving with our ai or interacting with our ai and uh and it, again with, with ava's character man like how she just left and then you know when she leaves the facility like the the, the last couple shots of the movie you know she she, she walks at the the intersection and you see everyone walking around and she just walks around and bam, she just disappears. And she she blends in with, with everyone. And that kind of speaks a lot about how quickly our technology is, is evolving. I think Elon Musk even said, you know, we're, as humans, we're evolving because we have our phones in our hand all the time. Um, don't quote me exactly on that. I'm just paraphrasing. But we're like humanizing a lot of robotics, humanizing a lot of, excuse me, uh, technology and if it came to the point where we were walking around with a lot of these robots and stuff, is it going to be the, is it going to be to where we're like, Oh, you know, hello, Mr. Robot across the street, like as if it's our neighbor, you know, it, and that's a scary thing to also think about. Or will we not even know? Right. Like you said, like Ava was just walking around that that's an even scarier thought to me. Cause like, what do you do? Like you go to the grocery store, the person bagging your shit could easily be a robot, you know? Like, if it's that easy, like, obviously it's a movie, but they put it right in front of you. It's like, they leave a lot of shit vague for you to just kind of think about. And it's like, why not? I can't not ask myself that question. Like, why, like, how could it not? 
ideas are always i feel like ideas are always teased with sci-fi shit because people are looking down on them like no that could never happen like it's just a movie shit you know yeah and i i agree with that you know like um a, a tangent here but like I'm, I'm not too big on aliens and stuff but like kind of like that you know where we're, we're so used to seeing the stuff and reading and fiction and 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 uh you know just kind of playing with it as if it's something not serious but god forbid if a fucking alien came to earth like how would we react to it you know like i think in the end we just make memes and shit and post it on the internet you know we get so we get so used to it we're like we we're like oh yeah and you ain't gonna do nothing else like we've, we've seen you in the movies you know it, it's the same thing with with ai and robotics and with with ai if we do get an ai that's like ava and that comes into the reality of things already within the next 20 to 25 years i think for us as humans we would have our guard down so quickly we'd, we'd be so comfortable with it and glorifying it like damn you know we made this in a way in a sense like humans are kind of like gods you know we created something but i don't know man i i think my this is my opinion i feel like we shouldn't let ourselves get that far i think it's very it's very dangerous to play uh, a god like being or trying to be something transcending what we are right now i think we we're good as we are right. um but but playing with something to be made out of our own hands that's a it's a very very uh scary thing i definitely agree it, i don't know i feel like it's pointless i feel like technology I feel like it, it should enhance us in some ways, but I feel like there should always be limits. We're going to end up being obsolete. If it comes down to like a Terminator type war, some, some random crazy extreme, whatever, but logically we are obsolete and humans have like a superiority complex. So it's like, okay, we're the superior animals on this planet. That's how we know it to be in society for as long as we can remember. If this thing can do everything that we can do and more, better, more efficiently, less errors, what are we gonna try to do? Enslave it? Make it do shit for us? I think a lot of humans, generally humans would want to do that. But with the being like, with something like, again, with with, with, a, with a being with an AI or artificial brain or whatever it is, knowing how fragile we are as, as humans i i think i don't know man it, it's a it's a very it's a it's like a rabbit hole sort of like 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 you said with, with humans having a superiority superiority co complex it, we're we're not going to see it coming we're going to be we're going to think that we're 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 ahead of it like we're and, in oh for real and then we're we're going to just by the time we know it it's going to be too late to turn back it, it, it's we're not going to be able to to stop it. Uh, I, th I think, we, and if anything, humans are for sure afraid of knowing that there's something greater and, and something that can really, and, you know, we, we already have like so many oppression issues in in our current day life. So imagine if the entire hum human race was oppressed by something greater than us and we can't stop it. I think that right there itself speaks a lot and i think we should i don't think any any i don't think anyone should let robotics get that far or ai or whatever what could you possibly make to keep them in check to not realize that like we look at them as the lower thing species whatever the fuck like you're a creature like you're a creation you're you're just like that playstation over there like you're worthless because you're not a human but at the same time it's like like you said, like we wouldn't see it coming. Our arrogance as a race, we're not used to something else being in control. And if we create that, we will not be in control. I really believe we will not be in control if we create that. There's no way to be in control. If if it does what it's supposed to, we will not be in control. With this last topic here before we wrap things up, I want to ask you now, I think we've probably already gone over it, but then just to go over it again, do you think... AI could possess some sort of human essence, or like, I guess you could say a quote unquote, a soul. I feel like it can be replicated, but it wouldn't be authentic. So like, I feel like since they can manipulate emotion and things like that, they can, 
I, th I feel like a robot can t turn around and like show you empathy, but it, everything would be a manipulation. There has to be an end objective or like a goal and shit and like something to achieve and shit, you know? It's not just gonna do things because it has a moral compass. Agreed. Yeah, I, I, think, I think I think that's what a lot of folks don't realize is like, you know, that, that's what, that's what, again, that's what makes us human is that we're able to to do things willingly without expecting something or, yeah, I mean, yes, there's a, there's selfish people out there, but then if you run into someone who's a good person, they, they don't, they will, they will never ask something back in return, or they're going to just willingly to do something to help people because that's just what we do as humans. We, we, there's good people out there, but with the robot, I don't think they're going to have that, that complex where a good yeah. and evil kind of thing is going to be like, well, okay, well, if I do this, it's going to help me or, or if I take you out, then it's going to help society. It's not going to think like how we think. The la the very last scene, she recognized that Nathan was the one keeping her captive. She knew Caleb was her chance, but just because she got what she wanted out of Caleb didn't mean that Caleb got rewarded for his efforts. You know, like she didn't give a fuck about Caleb yep. earlier. Like, bye. I'm, I'm I got what I wanted. Like, objective achieved. Next. She didn't, she didn't even look. She stopped on the stairs to look out the window, but she did not look back. That's really crazy to think about. That's scary. No emotion, no anything. She's not tied to him in any type of way. She didn't show any type of empathy. Like anything that she showed was just for manipulation. It's crazy. Thank you so much, Jays, for being on this episode, man. I really liked your thoughts on this. I'm, I'm glad I had you on for this episode just to talk about like AI in general and like this movie. And again, for the folks who are listening, this move th this wasn't a complete movie breakdown. We just wanted to review the movie itself in general and talk about the main points of this movie, which was the six sessions. Now, if you do have any questions or comments about AI, or like to say, like to either correct us or or disagree with us or agree or agree with us or anything like that, you can comment in the YouTube video or uh, email me at rickyvang at rickyvang92 at gmail .com. Give us your thoughts. Um, and before we wrap things up, Days, can you, uh, again, for anyone who wants to follow you or check out your music, how can they uh, reach out to you? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Days Senpai, D-A-Z-E-S-E-M-P-A-I. You can find me on all digital streaming platforms at Days Senpai. Um, yeah, stay on the lookout for all that new music and new videos. And yeah, man, th again, thank you so much, Days, for doing this, man. Like, you know, the first time we did the podcast, we, we talked about your music, but now with the second topic, it's just something... You know, that, that was a good good discussion for fans to kind of get to know you too, that what you're into and stuff like that. Man, when I saw that you posted this, I got really excited because I'm like, <laughs> this movie is crazy. And I think about a lot of stuff like this and it's very thought provoking. So I, I couldn't help myself. Like, I was really hoping you'd be like, yes, you can. <laughs> I was really excited when you hit me back about it, for sure. Yeah, you know, if I ever do like another uh, sci-fi kind of thing or more thought-provoking kind of movie review again, I'll hit you up for sure, man. Definitely. I'd be down at any time, bro. Just let me know. For sure. All right, so this is episode 71, you guys. Thank you so much for listening, and have a great day. If you enjoyed this episode, Make sure to follow, like, share, subscribe, and rate Spoiler Force Podcast. For comments, questions, or criticism, you can email me at rickyvang92 at gmail.com or message me on Instagram at instagram.com slash rickyvang.